I'm Christy Lynn and today we're going to be talking about lever changes or as some of you would say lever changes both is right <laughs> and I know for some of you this is quite a stressful concept when you see that a piece has levers in it may, uh, lever changes in it maybe you get a little concerned you may even avoid those pieces but that's not necessary it's really not that bad and it means that you can play beautiful pieces that you otherwise wouldn't be able to play so today I'm going to be breaking it down for you I'm going to start by showing you exactly how to move your levers effectively then I'm going to show you how to apply it in the piece like what you need to be looking at and concentrating on and then I'm going to show you how to practice it effectively and give you some tips for practicing lever changes. So let's get into it. Let's start by looking at how do you actually move the lever. Um, now just a reminder a lever is going to change your note from being say for example an E flat in this case moving it up and it becomes an E natural so you can hear how it makes it half a step higher. Um, so let's look at exactly how we do this. You'll see that I have another camera angle. Here I am in the other camera angle and that's to show you exactly what I'm doing. So what I would suggest is to put your thumb on the underside of the lever and your index finger on the top of it and then you can securely move it up and down. Make sure that when you change your lever you're going to move it all the way up until it like hits the end and then all the way down. Um, now there are some different types of levers some of them kind of twist or turn or might move slightly differently to mine so you're going to need to become familiar with exactly how your levers work um, but just spend some time moving them up and down and really getting comfortable with it. The way I suggested to hold it that's a pretty secure way but um, you can also just find out what works for you along the way and just get really familiar with moving it all the way up and down. If you find that when you move your lever all the way to the top it doesn't have a clean sound and it maybe buzzes a little bit then you'll find that you need to actually do a bit of servicing of that particular lever maybe tighten it or um, look at how the string where the string is compared to the lever um, so that would be covered in another video about servicing your harp um, but when your lever is in a good condition you should be moving it all the way up to get a nice clean sound if you only go halfway then you can hear it it's not in tune properly and it can also buzz a little bit so we want to move it all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. Now let's look at how to apply your lever changes within the music. So you notice that lever changes always happen with your left hand and that means that your left hand needs to be free to do the lever change and depending on how the piece was arranged or composed you, hopefully they gave you plenty of time to do the lever change. So I'm going to show you a few examples in some of the music that I've arranged starting with my arrangement of Somewhere Over the Rainbow or Over the Rainbow. Um, in measure 27 I'm going to show a little snippet up on the screen here you'll see that's where the lever change first happens and I gave you plenty of time to do that which makes it very easy. So the left hand in measure 27 does this long chord and then you have the lever change and then another long chord and there's plenty of time so let me show you what that looks like. So there was plenty of time it didn't feel stressful to me I didn't have to quickly rush there um, I just had lots of time to do it and let me break down a little bit more of what I was actually doing there. This is a great tip that my harp teacher gave me when I first started learning lever changes and it's really helped me and that is to be aware of your eye movements and actually move your eye to the lever <laughs> you don't have to pluck it out you're just going to move your focus to the lever that you're going to change even before your left hand is free so that when you move your left hand to that lever your eyes are already there you can move really quickly and um, so I'll show you what that looks like you won't exactly be able to see my eye movement but what I'm doing here is I know what my right hand's going to be doing because it has a whole lot of overlapping brackets which is really ideal when you're doing lever changes so I just check what's happening in the music and then I'm already looking at this F now and then I can really move it quickly. 
um, I was looking at that F lever and then I removed my hand really effectively. And then as soon as my hand is on that lever, before I've even done the lever change, my eyes are looking for where my hand's going to move back to. So let me just explain that a little bit more. So I'm about to do this lever change, my eyes already looking at the F lever. I pluck here, I move my finger there and immediately my eyes move back to where I'm about to put my left hand back to. And while I'm looking there, I move the lever and I move my hands quickly back to that spot. And then it really means that it's not stressful. I know exactly where I'm going. I don't need to like be looking around. Um, I'm really well prepared because my eyes are moving ahead of my hands. This does mean that you need to know really well what's happening in the music and in your on your right hand so that you can focus your attention on the left hand and the lever looking at those two places. So it's really great in this piece that there's a long series of overlapping brackets in the right hand because it means that I can play the right hand without looking. And then I can use my eyes to look at the left hand and the lever and it also means that I need to know a few notes by memory so that I don't have to look at the sheet music. So you really need to free up those eyes to look at your left hand and the lever and that will really help you to be less stressed with lever changes. The other concept that really helps with applying a lever change within a piece is to think of that lever change as having a particular beat. So you always play it at the same moment in the piece and you can think of it as almost like being another note that your left hand is playing or like a dance move. A dance move happens on the beat and if it happens exactly the same every time, then it just feels like part of the normal way of playing the piece, not something extra you have to think about. So I always do it in this piece on the third beat. So, one, two, three, four, every time. One, two, three, four, one, two. So it's always on that third beat in this piece. Okay, let's look at the next piece. This is my mid-intermediate arrangement of Hallelujah. This is how the lever change happens. So in this little extract, I'm actually showing you putting the lever up and then when I put the lever back down again, it's the exact same concept and if you your piece is really well arranged and crafted with the lever change, the arranger will have shown you the beat and the exact moment when they want you to do the lever change or as close as they can to without interfering with the notes around it. Um, so I'm going to show you both the lever change up and the lever change down. So this happens in measure 17. The left hand is going to play this and then move to the G lever and then it has to come back to here. So let's look at that. And then so the difference with this song is that when I'm playing the lever change on a particular beat, it's not one of the most important beats of the measure. Um, so it is something that you just have to be aware of in this type of piece. So I'll do the counting to show you. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So it's happening on beat five every time. And um, you just have to really make sure that you practice it just like a dance move or like um, another note of the left hand. You just make sure you're looking ahead and you're moving it on the same beat every time. And you'll notice in this piece that the right hand isn't doing a whole long series of overlapping brackets. So maybe it's a little, it takes a little more practice to be able to play that right hand without looking at it every second but I know my hand is in the right place, even though I'm coming off the strings, the strings are still gonna be there. So you just have to get used to, um, then I need the lever change there. So I had to put some practice in to be able to come off and come back onto the strings there without looking, but it's really worth putting that extra practice in um, and to also make sure that those few measures you can do with very little looking at the sheet music because you want to be able to confidently do those lever changes on the right beat. Okay, now let's take a look at the lever changes in my arrangement of yesterday for late intermediate harp. This one has a lot of lever changes and they're really fun because some of them you're actually changing two levers at a time. But don't worry, I gave you plenty of time in the music so you'll see how it's actually not too difficult to do if you apply all the concepts I talked about. So I'm going to be playing between measures 8 and 11. 
So all of those lever changes, it might seem a bit overwhelming, but it really just happens just like it, as if I was playing another note. And it happens at the same time, every time. And I find it really enjoyable. I think if you're at a late intermediate version uh, level, or maybe even a mid intermediate level, I think you'll enjoy learning the lever changes in this one. So let me break it down for you a little bit more. So we have plenty of time for that first lever change. The left hand just um, rolls the chord and then I'm looking up here. And when I do that lever change, I really just do it in the same way I, I just move the two sometimes I do it with just my thumb like that and sometimes yeah I think that's what I do I just lift it up like that and the two move together so it rolls and I've already been looking there and then I'm placing my right hand as I'm doing this so that I can then place the left hand now I'm looking to change the next lever I'm actually looking at the C, C lever then I'm looking here to play it and my right hand just has a whole lot of overlapping brackets so I don't have to look there then I've placed my right hand and now I'm looking to change those I'm looking over here to change those levers down and I'm looking back so I can play the next bit and now as soon as I've placed my left hand for the next chord I'm now looking here to move this lever down and then that's it, that's the lever changes, and from there it just carries on as normal. Now let's do some tips on how to practice to get your lever changes smooth and confident and getting them right every time. So the first tip is to make sure that you're practicing your right hand until you don't have to look at it. We've talked about that. Then you want to also make sure that you memorize that little section so that you don't have to look at the sheet music. You want to practice the movements of your left hand to make sure that playing the chord and then moving the levers is really natural and that's part of what your left hand is doing, that you're not thinking of it as a completely separate entity, but you're also practicing it as part of your left hand movements. Then you want to isolate just that little one measure or even three notes um, just around that lever change and practice it over and over and over with chunking. So take a very small section and make sure that you get that lever change on the same beat every time and you really practice it until it's so natural and you could do it in your sleep. If you still feel a little overwhelmed with how to practice a lever change really effectively, maybe you'd like someone alongside you telling you exactly how to practice that particular section of a piece. And that's what you can do with uh, the video courses for these pieces that I mentioned today and also some others that have lever changes. So you can click here if you'd like to use one of my video courses and I'll walk you through it. See you there. Bye. Thank you.